Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, I'm thrilled uh, uh, to, to be given the floor by a representative of Althinger, the oldest parliament in Europe, uh, and, and, and the one, the parliament that was the first uh, in very difficult time to recognize the restoration of statehood of Lithuania back in uh, uh, early 1991. Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, to say the truth, it's quite uh, a psychological challenge uh, to, for a diplomat uh, uh, to address such an honorable audience uh, of legal experts, judges. Uh, you know, one day we open an exhibition, the other day we uh, do make the analysis, the third day we deliver the position of our country on agricultural product uh, deliveries, uh, the third day we do something else, and everywhere very much superficially. So. Uh, but, uh, and therefore the notion of keynote addresses is, is quite an ambitious one and uh, let me immediately lower down the level of expectation and refer to my intervention as a few remarks of a practitioner. Uh, well, these days there has been a lot of fuss about inflation being too low. Economists and analysts, uh, analysts uh, have been coming out or I would say uh, waging a storm of pressure on European Central Bank with different suggestions and recipes of how to remedy the situation and return back to self-deceiving uh, but desirable status of constant inflation. The European Central Bank finally gave in and moved on with quantitative easing steps. Many of us, especially those whose uh, salaries are pegged to inflation index, will be happy. Mine is not. Uh, However, inflation should not be welcome everywhere. At least, I hope you shall agree with me, not in the development and practice of international law designed to protect human rights. I would like to draw your attention to and touch upon three aspects. Inflation in scope of norms. I was always uh, I'm quite skeptical of, of, of uh, this process of uh, creating new and new and new regulation. Uh, inflation in value of international mechanisms established to protect human rights and, in, and inflating budgets of international organizations. Let me start with the danger of inflation in scope of norms. United Nations General Assembly Resolution 60-251, under which UN Human Rights Council was established, reads that I quote, all human rights are universal, indivisible, interrelated, interdependent, and mutually reinforcing, and that all human rights must be treated in a fair and equal manner, on the same footing, and with the same emphasis, end of quote. However, we witness strong efforts to develop different sets of rights for different regions. Perhaps you will agree that uh, we should try to prevent those efforts from materializing. As it comes to national specificities, they can be protected by a promotion of cultural rights. However, the very universality of human rights should not be questioned. Another long-standing challenge is the risk of dilution of the standards for the protection of human rights. New and new initiatives on the development of new standards and legal instruments are pouring in, while it would be enough to achieve full implementation or enforcement of the agreed standards and conventions. Lots of time and effort, for example, has been spent on discussing the rights of peasants, even though full implementation of social and economic rights already agreed upon, as well as respect for private proper property would provide all the necessary answers. Now, uh, let me move to the next aspect, namely inflation in value of international mechanisms. By saying this, I mean loss of value in belonging to an organization or international structure. If we look to the ever-changing composition of the UN Human Rights Council at any given period, we can see the names of states that by no means can be associated with the protection of human rights. One may argue that the policy of engagement of a problematic country provides more favorable environment for producing reviews and regular reports on the situation of human rights in that country. I could agree with this line of thought, however, with only one condition, that ignorance of the rulings of the reports on violation of human rights 
is followed by expulsion from the Council or freezing certain rights of the respective state. With this regard, Council of Europe has recently demonstrated the approach to be followed. I would also like to share with you a few observations on the third aspect related to inflation, namely phenomenon of inflating budgets of international organizations. One can appreciate this in case of situation when additional functions are being prescribed to respective organization. However, very often we see that the cause and explanation of the rise in the budget lies in the notion of applicable uh, so-called UN compensation system. This notion almost always leads to ever-increasing salaries and thus growing budgets of organizations. On the other hand, over the recent few years under the impact of economic crisis, governments have been slashing expenditure in their respective public sectors. In some cases, for instance in Lithuania, uh, salaries of civil servants were diminished considerably already back in 2009. My salary was cut by 25% and after six years last month fully restored. Uh, because the Lithuania climbed fully climbed out of the crisis. Uh, one may ask what it has to do with the uh, protection of human rights. It definitely has. The governments have no appetite to go for any increase, any increase, and to give their consent to larger budgets. Uh, I quote, zero growth budget, end of the quote, is the most popular instruction that ambassadors receive from their capitals that it will eventually lead to a situation in which we shall have to make cuts in operational activities of international organizations, also uh, those established to protect human rights. Mr. Donfried, uh, ladies, uh, Madam Judge, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, well, a lot has been said uh, this morning about uh, the problems of enforcement. Uh, President of the, of, of the International Court of Justice, Mr. Peter Tomka spoke about that, then uh, well, you spoke a lot extensively about that. The, well, I, I would also like to, 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 to relate that to the topic of inflation. You know? <laughs> the invitation to this conference that I kindly received from Mr. Donfried uh, reads that development of an effective international law system is of paramount importance. I would uh, make it more concrete. We need to find the ways of how to deal with the cases in which the treaties signed by the states and commitments taken by them are afterwards broken and ignored, thus causing tremendous scale of violation of human rights. I try to avoid naming concrete states so far, but here I cannot but refer to the new Russian aggression against another neighbor. The bloodiest conflict in Europe since the Balkan Wars is taking place even as we speak. More than 5,000 dead, some 11,000 injured, and about uh, 1.5 million displaced. Such is the cost of Russia's continued aggression against Ukraine. Just like the breaches of the 1991 Alma-Ata Declaration, the 1994 Budapest Memorandum, the 1997 agreement between Russia and Ukraine on presence of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, the 1997 Treaty on Friendship, Good Neighborliness and Cooperation between Ukraine and the Russian Federation, the Geneva Statement and the Berlin Joint, Berlin Joint Declaration, the Minsk Agreements are just another casualty of Russia's aggression against neighboring Ukraine. Is it inflation of international agreements, conclusion of which means less and less, or rather a proof to Otto von Bismarck's saying that treaty with Russia is less valuable than the paper on which the treaty was signed? Thank you for your attention.